Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, is narcissistic personality disorder stable over time? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss anything new. Now, when we talk about narcissistic personality disorder, we're talking about a cluster B personality disorder listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. And we know that cluster B personality disorders, more so than cluster A and cluster C, tend to have symptoms that decrease in duration, frequency, and severity over time. Now, this is cluster B in general. Here I'm going to be looking at specifically narcissistic personality disorder. Now, there are a few studies that look at how the symptoms change over time with NPD, including one by Vater and colleagues published in 2014. Now, this study is interesting for a number of reasons. It tells us about the remission of symptoms over time with NPD, but also gives us information about how prevalent the different symptoms are of NPD initially. So when the participants in the study were initially assessed, we get to see the prevalence percentage for each of the symptom criteria. This is useful information because a lot of times we think about the symptom criteria of a disorder like NPD, and we know, for instance, with NPD, at least five of nine symptoms need to be endorsed we don't know how prevalent each of those symptoms are. Are certain symptoms highly prevalent and other symptoms rarely observed? Are they all more or less equal? We don't really know. And this paper gives us some insight into that information. So when we talk about MPD, as I mentioned, there are nine symptom criteria. Five need to be endorsed at least for diagnosis of MPD. And there is this categorical diagnosing, which of course is what we think of when we think of the DSM. But there's also a dimensional type of way of thinking about personality disorders, including NPD. So what's interesting in looking at this paper is the remission rate for NPD over a two-year period was over 50%, but a number of the symptoms, the prevalence, stayed stable over that time. So the categorical view of NPD saw quite a bit of remission, but a dimensional view did not. Now having an over 50% remission rate may seem pretty high when we look at NPD. But if we consider other personality disorders that are featured in other studies, we see that it's not that unusual. Borderline and avoidant personality disorder tend to remit at about that same rate. And schizotypal and obsessive compulsive personality disorder tend to remit at about a 60% rate. So we know that NPD appears to be in line with the remission rates for those personality disorders. So I'm going to go through the nine symptom criteria for narcissistic personality disorder and give the prevalence and then what was observed with that particular symptom. So again, the prevalence is the percent of the sample that met that particular symptom criterion. Now, starting with the first symptom criterion for NPD, we have grandiosity. Now, this particular criterion was prevalent 60% of the time initially and was relatively stable over the two-year period. It also had the third highest remission rate. Moving to the second symptom criterion, we have these fantasies of unlimited power and success. These were present over 70% of the time in the beginning, and they decreased quite a bit. It was theorized in the paper that these fantasies are really short-term coping mechanisms. This particular symptom criterion had the second highest remission rate. Moving to the third symptom criterion, this belief that one is special or unique. This one's particularly interesting. This had the lowest prevalence at the beginning, about 40%, and it actually increased in terms of prevalence over the two-year period. This was the only symptom criterion to increase over the two years. So this brings us to the next criterion, which is the need for excessive admiration. This was the most prevalent initially at over 80%. So here we can think of this as a defining characteristic. Excessive admiration appears to be a defining characteristic of narcissistic personality disorder. This excessive need for admiration was also the most stable over the two-year period. The next symptom criterion is a sense of entitlement. And the prevalence initially for this symptom criterion was over 50%, and this was relatively stable over time. The next criterion is a tendency to exploit individuals interpersonally. 
the prevalence of this symptom criterion was over 70% initially, and this was a symptom criterion with the highest remission rate. Next, we have a lack of empathy. A lot of times when we think about narcissistic personality disorder, we think of a lack of empathy. This tends to be conceptualized as an important symptom criterion for this disorder. Its prevalence initially was over 40%, so it was not as common as a lot of the other symptom criteria, and lack of empathy was relatively stable. An important note here with lack of empathy, cognitive empathy in narcissistic personality disorder is generally intact. It's the emotional empathy where we see a deficit. So the ability to empathize emotionally is actually lower. So this is a decreased ability to respond affectively. Now when we think of the cognitive empathy, again, we think of it as intact, but there may be a deficit in motivation. So the ability is there, but there's not a lot of motivation to use it. The next symptom criterion is this idea that an individual envies other people and they believe other people envy them. The prevalence for this symptom criterion was over 70% and it was stable throughout the two years. And that brings us to the last symptom criterion, which is appearing arrogant. This was prevalent half the time initially and was stable over the two years. So as we can see, to really understand a personality disorder or any mental disorder in terms of the symptom criteria, we really have to understand how often each symptom criterion is met. And again, this paper provides that information and interesting information about remission rates. So overall, does narcissistic personality disorder tend to change over time? Well, as I mentioned, categorically, it does appear to. It does tend to remit in over half of the presentations. But the actual personality characteristics the symptoms at a level that may not qualify to meet the full criteria can still exist and they do seem to exist a lot of the time. They seem to stay around over time. So this supports the idea that personality disorders are relatively stable over time. However, slight changes in how the symptoms present may result in a number of the criteria not being endorsed over a two-year period. So we do see a fairly high remission rate and at the same time, we think of NPD as being stable. So this really just highlights the importance of understanding how categorical classification is different than dimensional classification. I hope you found this description of narcissistic personality disorder and how it changes over time to be interesting. Thanks for watching.